You might be leaving money on the table with your clients. I know that I did, and this is a story about what happened to me. It was the biggest website project that ever was paid for, and I was stoked. A massive $1,400, it was all mine. It was for a local company that specialized in concrete driveways, and I got the opportunity because my business coach was also coaching them. And so after I got the good news that the project was moving forward, I got a call from my coach, and I figured that he had also heard the news and was calling to congratulate me on the big, big win. And I was right, mostly. He did call to congratulate me, but then his voice turned a bit more serious. And he said, Mike, I had to convince them to use you. You weren't their first choice. And I was like kind of surprised and started to worry about what I'd done wrong. He continued, you were the cheapest option. They thought that if they hired you, that they might not actually get what they wanted. I had to assure them that you were the right guy and that they were just getting a great deal because you were still learning on how to value your services. I left money on the table. On the one hand, I was excited about the project and happy to know that they believed in the work that I was about to do for them. On the other hand, I was shocked that a client would ever think I was too cheap to get the job done. That day, I decided that I would aim to never be the cheapest option. And in fact, I wanted to be the most expensive and most valuable option for my clients. As the saying goes, if you can't be the cheapest, there's no strategic advantage of being the second and cheapest. Always test the upper limits of the investments you ask your clients to make. You're only getting better and inflation is usually rising, so charge accordingly, stop leaving money on the table, and charge what you're worth.